S. Truett Cathy, founder and chairman of Chick-fil-A Incorporated, demonstrated his entrepreneurial abilities early in life. At eight years old, he went into business for himself, buying a carton of Coca-Colas for 25 cents and reselling each bottle to his neighbors in Eatonville, Georgia, for a nickel profit. Mr. Cathy's lifelong dream was to have a business of his own. After high school and a tour of duty in the Army, he sold his car, scraped together $10,000, and joined his brother in a restaurant business. Despite his early entrepreneurial ventures, not even Mr. Cathy could have imagined that this one restaurant would someday turn into a chain of nearly 400 fast food restaurants in 31 states with annual sales of over $200 million. Today, more than 12,000 people work for Chick-fil-A restaurants. Mr. Cathy cares deeply about the people who work with him. And as a result, Chick-fil-A boasts a turnover rate that is less than one-fifth the industry average. Additionally, more than $5 million have been awarded in college scholarships to Chick-fil-A restaurant employees during the past 15 years. Chick-fil-A also sponsors Windshape Center, a summer camp for boys and girls on the campus of Berry College in Rome, Georgia. About a fourth of the campers are on full or partial scholarship. In 1986, Mr. Cathy launched a year-round foster care program enlisting full-time parents to make a home for 12 youngsters. Mr. Cathy has been named Georgian of the Year, Entrepreneur of the Year, and has received numerous other awards, including the Community Service Award from the Atlanta Journal and Constitution in 1987. Named for a world-class minister of his church, he is recognized worldwide for his religious leadership for his devotion not only to making his dream come true, but others' dreams come true as well. The Racial Alger Association is very happy to present this award to Mr. S. Truett Cathy. And Mr. J.B. Fuqua, the man that Jill wanted to know more about, of the class of 1984 will present the Racial Alger Award to Truett Cathy. Thank you, J.B. Fuqua and others responsible for me being here tonight. I'm sure that your audience, after hearing those remarks from Bob, would much rather have J.B. Fuqua up here uh, <laughs> talking with you than me. But J.B., it's quite all right to have all those extras in life as long as you keep them in your hands and not in your heart. And certainly you've demonstrated that in the many, many things that you've been involved in helping other people. It seems that the Lord started very early in my life to prepare me to this place tonight, that I went into the restaurant business at age eight. I met my wife at age eight. We didn't get married at that time, but <laughs> she happened to live second door from me, and I always remember that sweet little girl named Jeanette McNeil. I never was in love with anyone other than she. And then I became a Christian at age 12, and this is not to say that I've done everything that's becoming to a Christian since that time, but I do thank the Lord that I haven't done a lot of things that otherwise I would have done had I not become a Christian at that early, early age. I was brought up in a boarding house, and I expect most of you out there know what a boarding house is, but I tell our young people, they ask me, what is that? Is that a condominium, an apartment? Uh, where they save your breakfast in bed? I said, well, not exactly. It was necessary for my mom to rent a very big house and take in boarders and not to furnish a room, but a bed in a room. And we furnished them two meals a day. It was there that I learned how to shuck corn, shell peas, and wash dirty dishes and set the table to go shopping with my mom at the corner grocery store. 
Then you could buy Coke six for a quarter, I noted. That's the real Coke with real sugar in it, the little six and <laughs> half ounce bottles where you wish you just had a little bit more. But I thought to myself, if I had a quarter and six empty bottles, I could buy those and peddle them around to my neighbors for a nickel apiece and recognize a five cent profit. So when I sold out, I'd run back and get six more and six more and six more. And finally, I accumulated the resources that permitted me to flag down the Coke truck and buy a full case of Coca Cola's, 24 Cokes, for 80 cents. And if any of you brought your calculators with you, you can put 24 in there, multiply by five, and deduct 80 cents for your cost, and you'd have a net profit of 40 cents. That is, if uh, you didn't break any bottles and you didn't have to buy any ice. But I feel from that point on, I sold magazines. I carried a Atlanta Journal paper route for seven straight years. Because of that boyhood experience, I was determined that someday that I'd have a business of my own where I could receive the rewards for my extra efforts. When I was in school, I was never really an achiever. I was ever, never able to make the chorus, and I could never play a musical instrument. I didn't excel in sports, and I certainly didn't excel academically, but fortunate for me, I did establish some good work habits and some good work attitudes that's been highly beneficial to me throughout my life. My brother and I pooled our resources after getting out of service. We were able to come up with $4,000. We was able to get a loan for $6,600, and we thought, gee, for $10,600, you could buy any part of the world that you wanted. And so with that kind of resources, we were able to buy a piece of property, build a building, equip it, stock it. And we called it the Dwarf House because that's indeed what it was, a very small place with 10 stools at the counter and four tables with chairs. Through that experience came Chick-fil-A. This is a boneless, skinless breast of chicken serving on a hot toasted butter bun. Located, hopefully, in a shopping mall near you. <laughs> People remind me, he said, Trude, there's nothing so great about taking the bone out of the chicken breast and putting it between two pieces of bread and serving it as a sandwich. I said, well, I certainly realize that. That's the reason I was able to do it. <laughs> it's all sample. But that did lead us into uh, invading the shopping center concept. At that time, no food was allowed in mall because if developers did not like the fumes, nor the smoke, or the paper down the mall. But we was able to convince this one individual to give us an opportunity, and we would generate some high sales figures for him, which we did. And we have expanded from that point, and we're continuing to expand into shopping malls. I've been motivated by what I've seen in our young people. Many of those young people work because they have to work, but others work because they just simply like to work. And there's nothing wrong with this. Like to work. I'm threatening to write a book someday, How to Make a Living Without Working. And I think it might be a good seller, best seller maybe. But you know, when you really do your very best, put your heart and soul in what you're doing, there's a lot of gratification there. People normally don't like work, but they like results of work. And so we find that a lot of people have been cheated, shortchanged, simply because of the fact they don't give it the very best. And we'll never realize our greatest potential until we start performing at our very best. The Lord has opened up a lot of avenues for us. We have more than 20,000 young people working for us in our various Chick-fil-A unit. We have association with Berry College, which was founded back in 1902 by a person named Martha Berry, whose philosophy was this, the importance of not only developing your head, but your heart and your hands, which is completely compatible to my own personal philosophy as well as to my business philosophy, because a person is not successful in one area of your life, but several areas of your life. We have ex expanded that, we right now have 96 students there on a $10,000 tuition scholarship. Five of this are sold by Barry, five by 
Chick-fil-A and on that very same facility, 28,000 acres of land, the world's largest campus. We have a boys' camp and a girls' camp during the summertime. And to expand on that, we have two foster homes where we have full-time paid parents and equip the homes to accommodate 12 children. If there's a need in America today is to give attention to young people who are unloved. We think about the enemy from the outside, but we have enemies within ourselves and things that we could do if we'd only do it. The instructions is what we say, how important it is that we say the right thing at the right time because lives can be changed by simply what we say, by words of correction and words of encouragement. The influence is what we do. Probably the greatest gift that God has given us today is a power to influence another person by what we do. But catch this, the image is what we are. And when you consider the fact that each and every one of us here tonight are created in the image and the likeness of God, it demands of each one of us to perform at our very best, regardless of our field of endeavor. Thank you very much, and I'm honored to be here. <clears throat>